I've had some fun messing around with this engine with 3D printed plastic pistons and connecting rods, 3D printed camshafts that have melted, and 3D printed camshaft holders and 3D print lots of 3D printed parts, but I think it's time to get serious. I think a good place to start is to have a cylinder that is round and smooth for the cast iron piston. So I'm gonna start by putting a boring bar on a big chunk of steel like Camden did, and I'll have a boring bar that I'll be able to bore out the cylinder with without it bending. All right, there we go. I've got some washers and spacers, and the boring bar looks really good. Um, the weld is, it's all right. Uh, there's some air bubbles from the starting with the gas a little bit too low, but I think it's pretty good, and there's no way anything is bending that. Okay, so I've got the cylinder and the lathe, and it's actually already pretty straight. I'm going to take a couple light cuts just to make sure it's perfectly round, but it already looks pretty good. All right, everything's going good. I figured out about 400 RPMs, if I can keep it around there, it's perfect. And I'm taking the lightest cuts I can, and I actually moved this up a little bit more, because the shorter I can get it, the more uh, better surface finish I'll get. Uh, it, you can hear it's on and off, because it was definitely not a perfect circle. Alrighty, so our first pass showed that the cylinder is not round at all. It is actually quite a bit out of round, so that's definitely a good idea, and the surface finish is really good. I'm doing as light a cuts as I can take, and the surface finish looks really good, and I'll hone it after too. Alrighty, well the cylinder turned out really good, and since it's a freshly machined surface, I covered it with a little bit of oil. But the surface finish is amazing, and I'll be able to go back through with a hone, and basically have the cylinder be perfect. Alrighty, so my engine hone showed up in the mail. It's time to hone the cylinder and see how good it looks after. Here's what the cylinder looks like after honing. I'd say it turned out really good. Okay, so I just used a bore gauge to measure the diameter of the bore from this way and this way. This way it was 66.69 millimeters, and this way it was 66.68 millimeters. So I'd say I did a really good job with that. Okay, so this weekend we uh, went to BIR and I got a really beat up top fuel dragster piston. Uh, so I melt, I'm melting down the piston right now. It was a pain to cut up. It's some super strong aluminum, uh, but I melted down the aluminum and I've got the piston right here. This is made out of the same aluminum that a top fuel dragster engine is made out of and they make 12,000 horsepower. Okay, so here's the final casting. Turned out really good, got to clean up a little bit and then I left a little extra on the front so I can machine it all in one go without having to flip it around. Uh, but you might be wondering why I decided to go with aluminum and that's because since I got a top field dragster piston, this is the correct type of aluminum instead of using the aluminum from pop cans. So that's why the change and it'll be probably lighter, but yeah. Also, if you guys are wondering just how big of stuff it takes to make 12,000 horsepower, Here's an aluminum connecting rod from a top fuel dragster, which makes 12,000 horsepower. Here's the piston from one, which I got a really beat up one at BR. This one's actually in really good condition, but I got a really beat up one and I melted it down. And here's just how big the valves are. For comparison, look at the valve compared to my piston for my engine. So far it's going pretty good working on the piston. I just got a new set of AccuSize uh, carbide uh, tooling for my lathe. Okay, so the piston doesn't look amazing, but I think it'll be fine because uh, I think it'll just hold extra oil and the surface contact si size will still be the same. Um, but here's a really good use of the compound rest. Um, without without uh, turning the compound rest, I would have never been able to fit this grooving tool and so I wouldn't have been able to make the rings. Thanks to the compound rest, I can turn it out like that and I squared it up and now it fits. Okay, so the ring grooves went way easier than I thought it would. On a mini lathe, grooving is one of the hardest things. But now, I have to go through and cut all that. <laughs> Just taking the finishing passes to get the piston to the correct height, and then the piston will be done except for the wrist pin hole, which I will be doing that with a 3D printed jig. Okay, so here is the finished piston. It looks really good except for all the pitting, but if anything, I think the pitting might actually help hold more oil. It's not like it's protruding or anything, so I actually think it'll be just fine. 
Um, but the piston looks amazing. If this, if it didn't have the pitting, I would actually think that this was a store-bought Predator 212 uh, flat top piston. All right, so I'd have to say I did a pretty good job with the piston. Here's the piston, and here's the cylinder. All right, so I 3D printed this jig, and so this got press fit into there, and then I drilled the hole, and there's the piston completely done. Obviously, it's not absolutely perfect, but that's to be expected. But the piston looks really good, and now it's completely done. Okay, so here's the connecting rod. It's made out of carbon fiber polycarbonate. Um, I have some JB Weld on the sides here because I had some in the middle. I had a little bit of clogging issues with the nozzle, and it had a little uh, the outer layer didn't get put on, so I just covered it with JB Weld, and it'll help make it stronger. But I'm going to show you how strong this stuff is. Okay, so this is a section of that filament. This is 18 by 18, so 2 millimeters larger. And this one's already beat up from me trying to break it. This one is 20% infill, so it's not even as strong as the connecting rod's going to be. But here's how strong it is. Alrighty, so I'm melting down some cast iron so that I can fill up this mold for making the piston rings for the engine. And then I have to remake the wrist pin, but that's all the parts. Molten cast iron is unnecessarily hot. That's a graphite mold, and it is red hot. I've never, even copper doesn't turn that red hot. But I think that'll work. I'll have to clean it up a little bit with an angle grinder. But jeez, that is hot. I'm, my hand's burning so hot. Alrighty, so I'm in the process of machining the piston rings. I casted this cast iron and time to get it all down to size. I severely underestimated how hard grooving was going to be in cast iron. In the aluminum, the grooves went super easy, nice and easy. Cast iron, completely different story. Uh, I actually ended up breaking one end of the grooving tool, uh, but I got it done, so yeah. Okay, so I got the piston rings cut. Uh, sadly, on this one, the groove is a lot bigger than I'd want it to be because I saw a video where he put it into a vise and then hit the bottom with a screwdriver, and it worked, but it accidentally chipped it in two places. I'm just happy it didn't go any deeper. But yeah, I'd, all that's left to do now is stretch them out a little bit and then heat them up till red hot so they stay there. All right, Camden, I see what you were talking about. I'm trying to get the rings in place. There we go. There's the rings. Well, I'd say it turned out pretty good. Leaks a little bit, but I'd say it's got plenty of compression. Okay, so I just got done machining the wrist pin. A little bit of pitting there, but where it's going to be running for the connecting rod, nothing. Compared to the other one, though, I'd say it's pretty good. This one's got pitting all over it, so I'd say this is a huge improvement over that. Okay, so I just accidentally found the perfect spark plug boot. So this little rubber piece is from the carburetor and I took it off because I didn't need it. Uh, but that, if I put it on like up on top like that, this can slide, the boot can slide over top of it and it works perfectly. So all I need to do is I need to replace the alligator clip on my ignition coil wire with this one and then put this on and I think this will work perfectly. I want to thank PCBWay again real quick just because those metal valve rollers are a huge help and I'm super happy that they provided them to me. Uh, it was a huge help, and I'd never be able to machine a hex by myself at our at our house. Okay, so I put the oil cap back on with a little thing so I don't lose all the oil, and I figured out I need approximately 75 milliliters of oil for this thing to be basically full. Okay, so everything is attached. You can see the spark plug boot actually fits really nice. Everything's going, and it's filled up, and it's time to test. All right, for these rounds, I'm going to be using intake cleaner instead of uh, starter fluid so that hopefully it won't dry out the cylinder. Video. Ah, yeah, it was promising. Okay, so I filled it up with a little bit more gas and it's time to test it again. Good.
she's burning a bit of oil though. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's burning a bit of oil. I gotta open the good door. And at least I know it runs with the homemade aluminum piston. <laughs> Connecting rod can't hold it. That's a lot of oil. Well, we have a crankcase window. I don't know if that's what I wanted, but. Okay, so as you can see, the block has a hole in it because the connecting rod failed. But after looking at how it failed, it looks to be a layer adhesion issue, caused the bottom of it to split out like that. And then it looks like the piston hit the bottom of the cylinder and it broke that off. So I think the next step, I'm going to try 3D printing a even thicker. So this one was 16 by 16. The new one's gonna be 16 by 17 millimeters and it's gonna be made out of PETG, which is already known for having a really good uh, layer adhesion strength. All right, so as you can see here, the block, it just blew through the side but I have the new PETG rod installed inside of there and it looks really good. So all that's left to do now is test it. Okay, so I now have everything hooked up with the new PETG connecting rod. And last time I put 100 milliliters of oil in, but I recalculated how much I need because a lot of it came out way, way more than I thought I needed. And I, it turns out I only need about 50 milliliters of oil in the engine. So I way overfilled it last time. So now it has the correct amount of oil and it's time to test it. Okay, so I had to go on a treasure hunt to find my safety glasses, but with the new PETG connecting rod, I did some calculations using the cross section, and it should be able to handle around 1,700 pounds of force. Now, obviously, it's actually going to be a little lower than that because the dynamic load's being applied to the engine, but we're going to see if she runs. it's trying to run away the carburetor might be delivering way too much fuel because it's acting like it's trying to run away i don't think the smoke knows that it's smoke just sitting there now you might be wondering how in the world is a gasoline engine running away i don't know because uh, I'm a little bit worried about the connecting rod coming through the side of the block and meeting my face. I'm actually going to put on a full face shield because I don't trust these safety glasses. Okay, I've got a fire extinguisher and a full face shield. Do I trust this thing? No. I idle screw a little bit. I might have to turn it down though if it runs too high. everywhere and that is amazing 
seems like our timing is way, way off. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to do that. <laughs> it was really bad 20 seconds ago. <laughs> and our exhaust is hot, although I do need to fix something because it's trying to move. Okay, so here's the engine. I am going to wrap up the video here just because I have something super exciting coming in the next video. And I don't want to spoil too much, but if you check out my community post, you might get an idea of what's coming in the next video. And in the next video, I'm going to remake this piece, or attempt to, out of metal so it doesn't keep warping that there. And then our intake manifold also melted. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you can stay updated on future, on future videos that come out about this engine because I have big plans for this engine. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and thank you very much PCBWay for providing me with those metal valve rollers for the last video and this video. Thank you very much PCBWay and thank you everybody for watching. See you later.